to Admiral's Log, February 10th, 1910. The current state of affairs in the European theater presents a complex tapestry of conflict and strategy. Russia now finds itself engaged in a multifaceted war, contending simultaneously with Austria-Hungary, Spain, and Italy. This challenging scenario requires a high degree of strategic coordination and adaptability from the Russian Navy. Fortuitously, the dynamics of these conflicts are nuanced, with our adversaries also entangled in their own separate wars with other major European powers. This intricate network of hostilities offers a unique blend of challenges and opportunities. We must navigate this landscape with a careful balance of aggression, tactical diplomacy, and leveraging the divisions among our foes. In addition to our traditional naval duties, a new directive has expanded the scope of our responsibilities. The Russian Navy has been tasked with providing essential logistical support to the Army. This collaboration between our naval and land forces is not just a necessity, but an opportunity to synergize our capabilities and enhance the overall effectiveness of our military efforts. The Navy's command of the seas can be pivotal in establishing vital supply lines, facilitating strategic troop movements, and offering critical support for terrestrial operations. This harmonization of efforts between the Navy and the Army has the potential to significantly amplify our military prowess, providing a combined force capable of strategic superiority on multiple fronts. As I undertake the planning and execution of this joint operation, the magnitude and significance of this task are not lost on me. The potential to achieve remarkable feats for Russia through this combined arms approach is immense. Our recent victories have bolstered the Navy's morale and capabilities, and the prospect of this new alliance with the Army brings a fresh wave of optimism. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to episode 12. It's February 1910, and quite a bit has happened. We are, once again, at war with the Austro-Hungarians. I'm not sure what I did to piss them off this time. It looks like they have a bit of a short fuse. And because of this, they also decided to start strolling into Poland. As one does. Well, as one doesn't, because they might have about 610,000 men of their own, plus some Italian reinforcements. But I have 1.3 million soldiers of my own. I have some French and some Chinese support, so this advance is going absolutely nowhere. It is time now to strike back. I have two dreadnoughts of the Europa class. I got the Apostol Piotr, which is the new one. And I have the new version of the Europa herself. This is the 1909 refit, making her a bit faster. This one does 22 knots, this one does 25. Now, they're also a bit more expensive, by about 8 million. Maintenance, consequently, well, <laughs> they're a lot more expensive to maintain, actually. Uh, this one costs you 8 million, this one costs you 4 million. So, yeah, they're, um, they're a little expensive. But it's for a good cause. We're going to send the Apostol Piotr, the Europa, the Pallada, the Destroyer. I have a couple of heavy cruisers over here. And I do know that there is a minefield, unfortunately. Not just a minefield, there's also um, a submarine over there. They have been starting to pop up and they're getting a little annoying. What I need now is a destroyer that can also sweep mines. I don't really have anything other than that big gun destroyer that I built, the Vladivostok class. They have the mine hunters. They take a while to build though, seven months. So as much as I would like to have these things with me, very soon. I can't. Well, not quite. But I can retask the ones that are currently getting built. So um, let's say the Vladivostok and these three, I'm going to have these over in Sevastopol. The other two are going to go, well, I'm still at war with the Spanish, or uh, again, I kind of lost track at this point. And I am at war with Italy. I think we might need them all here. Let's just get them all here and then order up a few more. So these gentlemen are also going to go and join in Sevastopol, which is going to get nice and busy. I'm going to order up a few more and make sure that we have a couple of destroyers over on the eastern side. Now, I know I'm running a deficit of minus 50 million. 
give or take, but that's fine. Something I would love to take is the Philippines. I'm not sure if I already mentioned this in a previous video. It is unfortunately held by the Americans, not the Spanish. The Americans have, well, kind of artificially bolstered their numbers. They have a 164 ship fleet, but 50 of that is torpedo boats. Um, that's a lot of torpedo boats, but it's also pretty easy to take down. I don't really want a beef with them right now, because as it stands, I don't exactly have enough ships here. So we're going to focus our attention here. And actually, as these guys are moving, I'm going to tell them to wait just a little bit for those destroyers to join the fleet. Because that does give me a bit more protection against mines. Now, what else is happening in the world? Um, everybody's invading everybody else, but mostly the Italians are getting absolutely hammered over here. As France just decides to take over, well, the majority of Africa. Uh, France has also taken eastern Spain. In case I hadn't shown you that, they're working their way into western Spain, but they might have bitten off a bit more than they can choose, considering that <laughs> they're fighting about 3 to 1, and not in the good uh, ratios there. They're also working their way into Italy. They have a massive army. Uh, they've suffered serious losses, and that offensive too is going nowhere. Nevertheless, the Italians are taking hit after hit after hit. They've been losing ships. They have a lot of ships under repair. Yes, they're building new ones. Um, their budget is still very respectable. And it's starting to show because this is not something you can keep up for a long time unless you have a healthy budget. As for my navy, um, it's nowhere near as, as impressive. I mean, I have a naval budget of two and a half billion a year. Look at Austria-Hungary. About four times that, and then some. Japan, four times that. Italians, five times that. And still, the AI of the ships themselves is what kind of leaves them behind. That is the factor that gives me the deciding, um, well, decisive victories in these battles, time and time again. It's not that my ships are vastly superior. Sometimes they're superior in some respects. Like, they'll be able to take hits better, because they don't have half an inch of armor on a heavy cruiser. But they should be just dwarfed by the numbers that the Austro-Hungarians can produce, and I'm not seeing that. Yes, I take down 40 ships on occasion, but still. Ah, oh, crap, I don't want to have to fight Japan yet again. Look at the Italians, minus 3, minus 3, minus 4... This is not good for your economy, and this is not helping me. I'm not sure how I'm losing ships in the Black Sea. Come on. I have two dreadnoughts. What exactly more do you expect me to send to secure the Black Sea? I have a power projection of just shy of a million. Come on, game. They have one submarine. The rest of their fleet left. Nonsense. All right, are these DDs commissioned yet? No, they're commissioning. Okay, oh, we're taking a move. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that looks legit. Um, we're going to take this back. It's taken a few years, but we're going to take it back. Is this moving? I don't think so. Not at this rate. As for the navies, look at the amount of traffic that we're seeing over here in the Med. There's US ships, uh, French, British, Dutch... There's the Spanish groups moving back and forth. Austro-Hungarians going all the way to Southeast Asia. No. Are you people all coming here? Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh, boy. So if I want to hunt down the Austro-Hungarians, I'm going to have to send my fleet to them? No. I'm not doing that. I'm going to do my own operation over in the Black Sea. Well, there's been a bit of an incident, and we're at war with Japan. Lovely. Uh, the Japanese are no strangers to losing to my navy, so I'm very interested to show them the door once again. Over here, we got one whole light cruiser from the Italians. I'm not sure exactly why it has any business being in the Black Sea, unless it's looking for trouble or hunting my transports. But the Marsala over here is uh, not exactly where she should be. I'm going to take this fight off screen because this is going to be like three salvos and she's gone. It seems like after the previous whooping I gave to the Japanese a few episodes ago, they've built new ships. These ships are substantially heavier 
well armed with 10 12.3 inch guns, torpedo launchers, a whole slew of secondaries, and well, armor is a bit hard to to analyze right now. Uh, maximum bulkheads. These things are tough. The Unryu class. They also have heavy cruisers with them. These are just packing four 7 inches and 16 4.7s. So I'm going to keep my DDs well clear of that. Normally, in a situation like this, I would have the Sveato Yakov, the Europa class, which again is a refit. Um, I would have that take on the smaller ships and tank the damage from the Unryu and the Takao. While Europa, Menin, and the others do the damage with their torpedoes. I'm not sure if that's feasible. I'm not sure if that will work. Because this is a very dangerous battleship that I'm facing. And I'm not sure if my ship can tank it. Time to get some eyes on those Japanese ships. Chesma's leading the charge. Behind her, Sviatoyakov. Now, what is this? ho <laughs> ho! The Japanese are getting real serious. Um, that's a substantial amount of firepower with the 12.3s. And they can bring about 8 barrels to bear. Yeah. That's dangerous right there. That is dangerous. The level of armor is currently unknown. I don't know how much this thing is actually packing in protection. I forgot to check the speed. Right now, it doesn't have any range? Yeah, it does. It has range, alright. I'm not sure if they detected me yet. It can pen the deck. Yeah, with a 12.3, I'm not surprised. If you cannot pen the deck with a 12.3 inch gun, then you're packing some sort of rubber balls. Because at this point, <laughs> at this range, most anything goes down right through the deck. Um, Chesma, by the way, is an unupgraded basic battleship. She, well, she might have received like one refit, but look at the accuracy, 0.8. Then we got the Sviatoy, which was higher. They were at about one and something. Anyway. Um, we're going to have to draw up a plan here. I penned? Huh. Cute. We're going to have to drop a plan here. When it comes to firepower, I can't match that turret for turret. That's too much. So, we're going to have to use our escorts. We're going to have to use the heavy cruisers. Uh, Minin and Europa. Europa does not have torpedoes. Minin does. I'm going to have the Minin detach and then rejoin the Europa. That's the heavy cruiser Europa, not the uh, battle dreadnought Europa. So that if something takes fire, it's the heavy cruiser with armor, not the armored tur well, the the armored torpedo boat, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> because that thing is not really strong. Uh, the light cruiser group slash DD group is following. These are the older DDs. They only have one torpedo, and it's an 18 incher. So. I wasn't quite expecting a threat level that suddenly jumped 10 stairs. Or 10 scales, if you will. So this is going to get very, very dangerous. The the pushing over the Japanese period, when they just had torpedo boats, might be done. Because if these things are serious, these battleships, that is, these dreadnoughts are theirs, this is going to get expensive. In the sense not only of, I might lose these ships and I'm going to have to replace them. But also, in the sense that I'm not going to merely have to replace them, I'm going to need to build bigger ships. And I don't really have the money for that. I mean, I got a lot of money saved up, but I'm also spending it very quickly. As I'm trying to get a lot of research done. And that is not cheap. Alright, let's get the secondaries on this. Primaries and whatever's behind it. They're all sailing bow in, which is costing them a lot of firepower. That is a torpedo, if not plural. Plural. I think if I just maintain course, we'll be able to pass them. But I'm not sure about the CL. There's another one there. 
Be with the light, you're gonna have to turn hard and slow down. We need to get rid of these things quick. There's a torpedo boat in there as well. Are these still the old, same old ones? 5.8. Legendary Kuban over there, guys. Haven't seen her in a while. You're not turning fast enough. You're gonna have to turn more than that. Jesus, look at the amount of shit they got here. That's gonna hit. That's gonna hit. Boom. There's lots more where that came from. Akigumo is down. Ahead, standard. You target whatever the hell is behind you. CL, come round. Target this. Heavy cruiser group. Target that. Don't care about the battleships right now. Not the priority. The priority is the incoming torpedo fleet here. Yakov, steady as she goes. We need to eliminate all these small escorts. Because this is currently going to cost me a ton of damage, maneuverability, and the potential to fire. If my ships start taking torpedoes and listing. Unacceptable. Jesus, you're slow. This thing is flanking at 19 knots. I need to get better heavy cruisers. Thankfully, I have a new heavy cruiser hull getting unlocked any minute now. Kill them. This one. <coughs> Turn. A lot of those Japanese ships around. A lot. Chesma turned starboard. Target the DD. That's more like it. One down. Jesus. Uh, starboard turn. Port turn. Split. Steady. Turn. 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 Mikhail, join Ishislav, you join that. This way. Mikazuki, dead. Mutsuki has launched torps. Destroy Div, target the torpedo boat over there. CL, eliminate the Mutsuki. Hashima is down. There's the Takao. What? It's a paper dragon? Not even a paper tiger, it's a paper dragon. Look at that main belt. That's impressive. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong ship, wasn't I? Yeah, I was looking at the wrong ship. This thing is serious. Whoops. I thought it had, like, zero armor, but that must have been the torpedo boat. No. What then? Yeah, it's the heavies. I must have glided over a heavy... The heavy cruisers are papers. Um, these things are certainly not. I have great difficulties penning these. <laughs> oh boy. Um, bulkheads. Maximum. Cramped crew quarters. That's a weakness. When it comes to anti torp they got one. Good lord. Boom. Flash fire. Oh no. Please don't get hit. This thing is cooking off nicely. At least all their small stuff that was very close is now gone. Toba seems like it might flood. You're gonna eat another Torp, aren't you? Get that DD out of the way. Shove it if you have to. How many guns did you have? None anymore. Okay, the torpedo's cleared. Target that. Excellent. What's your chance to pen me with those guns? Yikes. Oh, destroyed a torpedo launcher. That's nice. I feel very vulnerable with these ships. Very vulnerable indeed. I think it's time to <coughs> try and get the fleet back together. And just, well, slug it out for a while.
Maybe lay a smoke screen with the DDs. And buy some time. Look at that. We're just getting nowhere with the AP. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Target the heavy cruiser. We're going to target some other things than the battleships. The battleships get to live. We're going to have to come up with some other fix to deal with those things. Smoke. Lay smoke screen for the Yakov. This thing's flooding, but that'll barely touch it. I need to expand the range of my DDs. Like the torpedo range. Ooh, you guys are right in line with the battleship. Which is not bad, because it means the battleship has more smoke cover. But it also means that if something decides to shoot the battleship, you're stuck in the middle. My explosive to all... As long as you're... Actually, no, not you. Yeah. H-E. Uh, Chesma is coming under fire from the DD. Come on, you're one of those battleship hotels. You can make sure that that thing dies. The Menin dies to extensive fire? Really? You got hit for 11,000? That's not extensive fire, that's just death. That is just death. There's no extensive fire. There's just no ship left. Let's see if we can damage the Takao a bit with some of the torpedoes. That is working on the assumption that these damn things would have worked today. This one worked. Right on the nose. Oh, that's it. Jesus, they did lose 5% crew. Which is nice. Because I think crew loss might be the way through. Just force them to surrender because they have no crew left. I'm not really sad if the DDs die here. There's another torpedo. And another. <coughs> um, I just need one of these things out of commission. This thing must be really expensive. 192? Minus 212. How'd you pull that off? Starboard launcher is ready. Target the Indriyu. Lost 8% of crew. We're going to need to do a load more than that. Hard starboard. Uh, you're targeting the heavy cruiser still. I don't care for that. HE on everything and see if you can melt down the crew. Chesma, status. We haven't checked in with you in a minute. You are working on melting a destroyer. That's good. My destroyers are pretty screwed. They also seem to have... Whoa! Swanky goes out with a really sizable explosion. We're just peppering the Takao. Hoping to get some crew killed. And crew kill also means less damage control and potentially overwhelming fire. Although that's not strictly the way I'm planning on killing this thing. Get this thing, the Hatsuzuki. They're probably pretty quick too, aren't they? 20.9 knots, they're not that quick. So if it comes to it, I can run away with the Yakov. Oh boy. Oh boy. If this thing decides to return fire, it's currently locked on a light cruiser. I don't even know where the Cuban is. Oh, here. Target this, please. They're flooding. Pretty badly at that. Damage control at 85%. What's your chance to damage my ship? Yikes. That... Is not what I would really like to see. Target the Hatsuzuki and eliminate it. Makes it that a turn. We got a torpedo coming in from the Hatsuzuki. Takao should be able to contain that flooding, but the fire is a different story. It's an additional three fires. I think they might go down to extensive fire. And this is why it is so dangerous to have less than standard crew on your ships. 
Less than standard crew means you start taking crew losses, you're going to feel it. And you might have a ship that's very well armored, but if your crew starts taking losses and your damage control goes down, well, then you're in trouble. Because if that happens, you will find that your ship is just sheerly unable to recover from extensive fires. Why the fuck are you still in orbit here? There's so much going on that I didn't even spot this. Alright. Very brave to be parked right next to a battleship here at 500 meters. It does explain why this thing was targeting a, a destroyer with a torpedo. That's something I was a bit confused about. The cow has 17% crew loss. The torpedo is not a threat. Europa. Why are you still considered a ship? I joined this. Okay, we now have a ghost ship. Minin's now a ghost ship. Noted. Come on. Destroyed funnel. Both funnels, in fact. That's going to cost them acceleration. This firepower, they're they're definitely training it on the Yakov at the moment. Chesma. I don't really feel like the Chesma is going to hit that destroyer. Load high explosive projectiles and start targeting the Takao. Leave the secondaries to deal with the Hatsuzuki. It's like the game suddenly had this difficulty spike. Oink, there goes the Europa. It's like it suddenly had a difficulty spike, when the Japanese suddenly started fielding ships that are almost twice the displacement of mine. I mean, not the cow. Actually, they're pretty even. 28,000. I thought they were a lot bigger. How this DD ventured into the middle of that fleet and came out, I don't know. It's really quite incredible. Destroyed secondary tower. That's nice crew losses and damage control issues. I really wonder what the game's going to do about the Menin, because that thing is dead. But it still has 1% structural. I mean, it burned to a crisp. And thus sunk. So I'm not sure why I'm still seeing it. Looks like the cow's falling in behind the Unryu. Let's just target the farthest thing in the back. And see if we can hit something in front of it. Oh yeah, we can. There goes the Asadori. I want to get rid of the Naishi and the Yumiori here. Ooh, Jesus, what's going on here? You got hit by a Torp. And it's going downhill from there. Get out of here if you can. The Yakov is starting to flood. Which means I'll not really be able to run away anymore. Ah, this is turning out quite dangerous. Hat Suzuki is parked? Oh, there she goes. We're gonna need a lot more firepower for these fights. And the whole brawler concept with a battleship like this used to work. Not anymore. Kuban, making it out alive. Excellent. That's a museum ship. Slash hero ship. We cannot have that thing go down. Over here we got Kitakami. Oh, sink the Kitakami, please. Kitakami. Oh, that thing in World of Warships was not fun. And, yeah, it kind of was. Come on, there's like five ships in a row. This isn't World of Warships or the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is bowling. You can get a big strike over here. Get it. That smokescreen is making life a little bit un... A little bit of unnecessarily complicated, I'd say. There you go. You really shouldn't get in the way there. What the hell, dude? That flooding is getting out of control. And these things take forever to build. So it's not like I'll be able to really quickly field another one. I am building another one. Because I saw that at some point I might need another one. 
Okay, let's start targeting the Undryu. Especially with all the secondaries that I got. The 8-inchers might be able to set some fires. Take out some crew. Because when it comes to flat-out damage dealing, I won't win that. Europa has a flash fire. Oh god, she's going down. She is going down. And I'm thinking, at this rate, the Yakov might be pretty close to her. Jesus, how are you not dead, dude? Destroyed main tower? With HE? You're gonna have to run that by me. Superstructure, one inch. Ha! <laughs> okay. Well, that's that. 13% <laughs> crew lost. Yakov's badly, badly damaged, but she's still kicking. Doing 61,000 damage so far. Where are you going? This is no time to sacrifice yourself for the battleships. That really isn't necessary. Jeez, is she trying to add to her legend or something? She has no ammunition after the flash fire. She's still dodging torpedoes. Well, was. That was an interesting ride. <clears throat> 14 crew loss or 40% crew loss there. The Takao is down to 22. And we got angle issues. I can't shoot anymore. Run! We can't fight. We really have done a lot of damage. 138k in the face of what we are... Well, severely outnumbered by. Now I just need to try and get the hell out. The fact that these guys lost their control tower, their conning tower, is helpful. Because their fire control is now no longer as effective. Might buy me some time to get out. The problem is, she can still get up to speed. Her sister can't. And they're still in the division, so the Takao is slowing down the Unryu. Put some secondaries on this. Uh, this actually is Shirakami. We might be able to hit the torpedo boat in front of it. Ooh, destroyed main tower again. Guess they rebuilt it in the meanwhile. I am running very low on HE shells now. Another fire there. Ooh, that's juicy. Yeah, you're dead. Don't venture too close to the sun. Or at least, not to my dreadnought. More crew loss. They do have some fires, but it's never going to be enough to take them down. What is that? That's the four inchers, isn't it? Yeah, the four inchers are taking out the torpedo boats. Nice. That was long-range fire from the other battleship. Or at least it felt like it. But... Yeah, Chesma also has 11-inch. <sighs> run, 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 run. Target hat Suzuki. Come on. Eight kilometers away from the battleship, nine and a half from the Takao. Just keep running. Just keep running. These guys have a torpedo range of... Three. Not that problematic. Come on. I think I might be able to evac the ship here. 11 and 11, 9. It's like they're turning away. Hopefully I can evac them. But it might take a while. And so, we've suffered a defeat at the hands of the Takao and the Unryu. These ships were damaged, but not much. They scare me.
6650 victory points for me. 8719 for the Japanese. And I have lost two heavy cruisers, including the legendary Europa, the Mikhail, and the Zvonki, which is the name giver of her class. They did take some losses. I sunk 12 ships, mostly small shit. Um, one torpedo boat survived, but all of the heavies and all of the lights. Most importantly, I did not lose the Yakov nor the Chesma, but good lord, we're going to need a bigger ship. We're going to need a bigger ship, a bigger gun, a bigger rangefinder. <laughs> well, better everything at this point, I guess. Um, what tech do I have? I got the rangefinder coincidence 2 at this point, so that's a favor. That's going to make my accuracy a little better, although the Yakov did have that. The problem is I don't have the pen. Um, hmm. How can I take those things down? I don't want to go the route of submarines. That's not necessarily a way I want to fight this. What tier guns do I have? Because I know that I'm researching... Oh, Mark III, th 13s. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't mean I already have Mark III 12s. How big can my ship get with this current status? 26k. That's it. That's the displacement of Europa, just about. Um, we do have access to the large armored cruiser, which is nice. It's basically a mini dreadnought. Yeah, we're going to have to build a better ship, but I will not do that this time. Because this episode has run its course. The war against the Japanese has most definitely not. Fueled by their victory, I fully expect them to come back for another round. And my battleships are not ready. My escorts are, well, at the bottom. Um, my minesweeping capability with that is gone. So I am in dire straits here. We're going to send the ships back to port, repair, and regroup and figure out our next move. Join me in the next one and figure out what we're going to do about this.